with the introductory Pasuk, Vayeshev Yaakov Be'eretz Megure Aviv Be'eretz Knan. It tells us of Yaakov residing in the land of his ancestors, not just Eretz Knan, but described as the land of his ancestors. The next Pasuk is also an introductory Pasuk. Ela Toldot Yaakov. This is the continuation, the children, the things that happened to Yaakov, and it goes on to tell us Yosef ben Shvas Reishana, tells the story of Yosef, his brothers, we all know how the Parsha continues. And the question here that Rashi addresses is, what's the relationship between these two introductory psukim? One talks about where Yaakov lived, the other talks about what ended up happening to Yaakov with his children. The Parsha, of course, is named after the first Pasuk, Vayeshev Yaakov. But the second Pasuk seems to be a major introduction, Ele Toldot Yaakov Yosef. So Rashi begins by giving us the Pshat. He says that the whole story of where Yaakov lived and how he ended up moving to Mitzrayim, Vayeshev Yaakov here, and eventually the end of Parshat Vayigash, the last Pasuk, Vayeshev Yaakov Be'eretz Mitzrayim, that happened through Yosef. So the Toldot Yaakov Yosef is how we get from Vayeshev here to Vayeshev there. After telling us what Rashi calls Yishuv Pshuto Shel Mikra, Liot Davar Davur Al Ofanav, which is a broader sense of Pshat, fixing the whole story in its pieces, then Rashi says, Umedrish Agada Dorish. The Medrash Agada tells us lessons we can learn from this juxtaposition beyond the simple Pshat. And Rashi quotes a number of Midrashim. I'd like to relate to the last one. Rashi says, Va'od Nidrash Bo Vayeshev. Bikesh Yaakov Leshev Bishalva, Yaakov sought to live in tranquility, peacefully, after everything he'd been through. Kafatz Alav Rog Zoshal Yosef. And that's why he was jumped by the challenge, the story with Yosef. Rashi summarizes it as Tzadikim Mivakshin Leshev Bishalva. Tzadikim seek to live in tranquility. When that happens, Omer HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem says to them, it's not enough what you have set aside for you for the next world. You seek to have tranquility in this world? The Medrash that Rashi quotes sees the troubles that Yaakov experienced with Yosef and his other children. The whole continuation of these parashios as being caused by Yaakov seeking to reside, reside Bishalva with tranquility in peace. The obvious question is, why is that a problem? That a person should want to live peacefully, happily, considering everything Yaakov had been through since that major day when he went in and took the bracha from his father, and then he had to go to Chutzlaret and challenged with love on and chased by Esav, and now he finally wanted to live peacefully. Why is that such a problem? I think the answer here is very important, to a certain extent very obvious. The Gemara in Brachos Daf Samachdal tells us, don't have rest, they don't have menucha. Not in this world, not in the next world. Whatever it means about the next world, we don't know. But this world, we understand very well. The Svat Ahmed explains in a number of pieces at the beginning of this week's parasha that though there is nothing wrong with living peacefully and in tranquility, it's not what a person's goal should be in this world. The problem is when Sadiqim are mevakshin leshev b'shalva. We wish each other peace and tranquility, but it shouldn't be what we're after, what our goal of our lives is. To use the words of the Sfat Emet, v'ikar hakpeido al zeh she mevakshin, k'mo shekosev mikodem, etc. Sadiqim yoshvim b'shalva, that's okay. Ach kishem mevakshin, that's when it's a problem. Mishnah, of course, tells us in Avos that one moment of tshuva and ma'as and tovim in this world is greater than all the pleasure of olam haba. And one minute of the nachat ruach, of the peace, tranquility, and appreciation in the next world, is greater than all of the shalva of this world. This world is not the world of plateau, relaxation, and tranquility. It's the world of avoda. I'd like to conclude by reading a piece from the Mesiyot Yisharim. He says in Perak Tet, Tzarich she'eda ha'adam, the world is not created for rest. We know how enjoyable, how relaxing it is to rest. And we can appreciate that, but that's not the goal. A person should not 
act in any way but the minag hapoli ma'usim melacha etzel maski re'em. A person should be in the world as a worker who has a responsibility to maximize every moment. He says, Ukederach yotze hatzavah b'marachotehem. And like people fighting a war, Ashir achilatam b'chipazon v'shenatam arai v'omdim tamid muchanim leid krav. They have to be ready on their battle station. So they eat quickly, here, there, ready to do their work, ready to defend. Adds the Mesilat Yesharim, Kishi Yargil Adam al Zadarach. When a person gets used to this, Yimtza ha'avoda kala alav vada. He'll find that the work is easier. Kevan shelo yechsar be'atzmo ha'azmana ve'achana ilal. Because he'll be ready and focused on it. Ve'al zeh ha'adarach amru zechonam levercha kachi darka shel Torah pat ve'melech tochal ma'in v'mesur atisteh. That a person isn't focused on the conditions he has. He's focused on the work at hand and gets by with whatever conditions he happens to have. May we see, be able to see, our lives as goal-oriented, where rest is a means to a greater end and not the end itself. And so that our yeshivot, wherever we are in yeshiva or elsewhere, should not be one that God has to wake us from with Toldo Yaakov Yosef, but one we can build off of because our goal is to build. Shabbat Shalom.